Guys, my name is Discourse, and welcome to my channel dedicated to bringing you the best Batman Miniature Game content on the internet. For more content just like this, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so you're always up to date. Today, we're going to be discussing the new April 2021 releases, and I will be sharing with you my first impressions of those. So, I haven't actually reviewed those um, in terms of looking through the character cards. But I have done a rundown of those yesterday, just if you were more interested in seeing what was actually being released. Today, I thought we would focus more so on the year one releases, um, if only because that's of more interest, I think, to the veteran players. Separately, I'm going to cover the starter set and the miniatures that you get in there, alongside the 70 Reputation Gordon and the Joker, like Joker model that you get in that as well. I think that those models will be a lot more useful for beginners, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who are interested in those. And there's probably a lot more that I can speak to in that, if only because I have already been playing with those models for a long time. Whereas the year one models are going to be more of a sort of new experience and I'm really curious to see what the actual stats on them are and what special rules they're coming with. So first we have Batman year one. This is a very interesting sculpt for Batman. Clearly it's sort of designed around whenever he comes out of the, I think it's the parking garage where he's been, no, it's in the stately, I think it's in a, an apartment block or an abandoned tenement building of some kind where the GCPD have surrounded him in some capacity. This is Loeb's response to Batman de deciding that he's going to go after the sort of higher elite of Gotham and Flas and the SWAT team are coming after Batman and he's been put in under a lot of pressure and then famously he sort of manages to escape by using the bat swarm which is depicted in batman begins as well so we're gonna have a look at his stats so it to me a lot of the year one batman i mean first of all it's probably one of the best batman stories i think that has ever been made although i do sometimes confuse it a little bit with mask of the phantasm just in terms of the story beats i think they're very similar okay so first off um Obviously, it's Batman Year One. It's on a 40 millimeter base, um, which is maybe a little bit larger than I expected. I thought he might have been on a sort of smaller base, uh, but I suppose he has he has the leader rank, so that makes sense. Obviously, Batman affiliated, um, so that makes okay. That's perfectly in keeping. No rivals. He's 121 rep, so that's quite a bit. It's significantly more expensive than I maybe anticipated. Um, I thought that he would probably have slotted in around more like 80 to 90 reputation, a sort of more slimmed down Batman, if only because he's in year one, he doesn't have all his kit yet. Um, so it's interesting to see what they'll have done to justify that higher rep. He has a uh, pretty good willpower, although it's a little bit less. I mean, tends to Batman tends to, I think, equal out around the eight willpower mark. Yep, so I've just pulled up the previous, the Back to Gotham Batman there, and you can see nine willpower. So he has a significantly lower um, willpower than the Back to Gotham. That actually matters. This is basically an extra punch, right? The difference between seven and nine, that's two stun damage. Most models that are going to deal stun damage in melee tend to be dealing two stun with every hit. So this is one less hit that you might be able to take. Nine endurance is amazing though. Um, I'm guessing this represents sort of his grit, his um, his capacity to withstand punishment um, as seen in <laughs> year one. Four attack is a little bit on the weaker side for a 121 reputation. We tend to sort of expect and hope for five stats of five at this level, if only just because the, um, you know, four, f the ranking of four, I think I usually anticipate it to be in the sort of 80 reputation mark. So this is a little bit poor, but he does come with five defense, which is pretty good. Um, in fact, it's better than pretty good. It's awesome. Five, five defense is almost unassailable to a lot of models. A lot of henchmen are going to have a, a really hard time trying to hit him, especially in melee, where he'll be able to effort as well to add additional dice. Um, that said, I mean, the four, the four attack isn't you know, it's not crippling in any sense. It's still pretty good and it's it's a lot better than three. I always sort of hark on that there is a big difference between three and four in this game, just like there's a huge difference between two, two and three. Although after that, it all starts to sort of fade in a little bit. Strength die of three plus is really good. Um, that means he's gonna hit his strength half the time, which is just excellent. Um, that's better than average um, for models in this game. They We tend to see strength die of around five, five plus or four plus if they're really good. 12 movement so that's pretty standard for batman batman's usually pretty fast um and then three skill which is normal so he comes with the standard battling skill which you know with the battling weapon um two stun damage uh, 
It's two rate of fire, short range of throwing, so you can kind of move and throw this. That's pretty good. Blowgun is new. Uh, rate of fire one. Huh. Has short range mechanical silencer and paralyze. Okay, let's look up some of those traits. So silencer was what I was suspected it was. It basically means that you cannot use dodging roll against it. Um, this is excellent. This is really strong. Um, if you've watched any of my older sort of reviews of the Joker crew, I went over the uh, Jared Leto back to uh, sorry the Jared Leto clown box, and in that review there is a model called the Panda Man. And the only reason why you'd really want to bring him is because he has I think it's the red dot and the silencer. And what the silencer does is it means that you cannot use the dodging roll against it, and that is absolutely superb, especially against lists that really rely on dodging. Um, so acrobatic lists that, you know, like the Teen Titans, for example, have a lot of acrobats. The uh, Birds of Prey as well, surprisingly, have a lot of acrobats in it as well. Um, so that's really good. It means that even though it's got a rate of fire of one, you're still able to push through a few extra die dice against those models that wouldn't, that would otherwise be able to sort of uh, resist it. Um, no damage profile, though, is the sort of um, first thought. So night models threw me off, they had spell paralyze wrong and it made me spell paralyze wrong, so paralyze. So paralyze basically makes a model lose its skill by two and cannot perform actions until the end of the round. That is super powerful. So I had originally thought that maybe the lack of a damage profile was by accident. Um, sometimes these cards do come out with errors on them, but now I'm suspecting that this actually might be purposeful. That the reason why you'd want to use this is to reduce someone's <laughs> defense by two and also prevent them from scoring any other actions that's absolutely awesome i'm super impressed by that i think this is probably the best gun i've seen in the game that has no damage profile <laughs> so very impressed by that um obviously with that you're gonna wanna i mean the five defense works really well with that because it means that you still can threaten the opponent and they can't really resist you you know they're gonna have a really hard time preventing you from stopping their activations if you're able to work out what it is that the opponent wants to do you can really shut them down so this will provide a lot of really strong counterplay obviously you're giving up a sort of very strong attack with batman but to be honest there's a lot of times where i'll give up an attack with batman anyway to do things like place down suspect markers so this isn't this isn't too bad okay so now we're gonna look at the traits so Bad Beacon is the first one, and it's the one that probably stands out the most to me. So, it looks like it's a special. Okay, so, basically what this means is, you target a suspect marker within 6 inches, you place an explosive template over it, then you roll 2 dice, uh, you roll 2d6, and all models that are underneath that explosive template, uh, if their willpower value is lower than the 2d6 number that you rolled, so say you rolled 11, right, you got a really high roll, um, then if their willpower is below 11, then they suffer the scared and push two effects. That's really good. The scared effect means that the model cannot use the dodging rule and it suffers minus one to its attack and defense rounds rolls. So this is actually a very good, this is a very good uh, AOE attack, right? Um, this, this beats a lot of the DLA single stun damage or a blood stun for everything under a template i would much rather reduce the attack and defense of everyone caught underneath that it also suffers push too so it has a little bit of board control element it means that you might be able to sort of push people out of maybe your deployment zone if you're aware that they're trying to be in there um yeah i'm actually i really like that it also gives batman a little bit of extra mobility so if he's caught underneath it as well he will get teleported so obviously this reflects the uh the scene where all the bats come in and they scare all the cops and the cops are all completely stabilized about my matches to escape so that's a really cool i think um use of the thing to create a very interesting mechanical effect that is very different from what we've seen previous batman batman be able to do he of course comes with back cape which is very standard just means that he can fall off a building and not die um, which would be very anticlimactic for batman he is of course a detective as well which means he can place or reveal a suspect marker within three inches and line of sight instead of having to be in base contact. This is awesome for a lot of reasons. It just gives you that extra little bit of mobility for suspect marker play. It also allows you to just, you will be surprised at how often you will rely on the detective marker trait. It's also a keyword that allows you to score some cards in the Batman deck, so it's just very good. He comes with hidden. Hidden is a really powerful ability in this game. I tend to find that the first two phases, like the, or sorry, not phases, the first two rounds of the game, I tend to be dealing with a lot of movement 
trying to get into positions where I'm able to maybe score cards, you know? Hidden allows you to move up straight away. Just basically teleport somewhere into the map during your deployment, right? So you basically can deploy anywhere so long as it's outside of 12 inches of an enemy model and isn't in line of sight. So Hidden, super powerful. I see it used on, I mean, Harvey Bullock makes really good use of this um, to help score some of the, like secure the perimeter, for example, in the Batman deck, which needs you to put down suspect markers on the edges of the map. It seems like Batman might be able to do a little bit of play like that, although you don't tend to want a 121 reputation model just sitting sort of quietly on the sidelines. So that means that you might use this hidden trait to sort of deploy more aggressively, maybe on a rooftop, you know, um, that this is awesome. And I'm just I'm noticing that there's no bad claw with this Batman, um, which is usually Batman's main way of mobility is the bad claw, which allows you to move up and down buildings and gives you more movement whenever you use it. It's a special action. So Hidden's going to be really useful to him to try and get him into a position where he's able to drop down on opponents because without bad claw, he's actually a lot less mobile than other Batman. So I guess that's where Bat Beacon is really useful as well, right? It comes with Master Stealth as well, which is this, this is pretty standard Batman as well. Um, it's really good. It is really useful. Normal sort of line of sight in during the night is 12 inches. So this means that you can only be spotted within six inches. This will often give you a little bit of extra space from which to work to get into melee with opponents and not be in range of their guns, for example. Forcing them to, you know, roll two less dice is really good. He of course comes with reinforced gloves, so that is two stun damage for every attack. That's pretty standard that, you know, it's really good, but it's very standard. Shadows Agent, now that's new, huh? Okay, so this means that if you take this Batman as your boss, you know, because you've got to choose a leader to be your boss, you, oh, at the start of the game, you must choose another friendly model to be the boss instead. Uh, I'm actually, surprisingly enough, I'm really excited by this. This, first of all, opens up a lot of this building opportunities, but it also means that you can have a very GCPD heavy uh, list and still bring a Batman model in without being the boss. So this is actually very strong. This is surprisingly strong. In the games I play, I play against a lot of GCPD and my opponent often uh, plays with Gordon as his boss. However, rules as written, we can't actually do that because he often takes Batman as well. He uses the standard Back to Gotham starter crew. Uh, it's a very powerful crew, but Gordon Unfortunately, he has he is a leader as well. You can only have one model in your crew that is of the leader rank, okay? But Gordon specifically, the 70 reputation model, has a special rule which is Affinity Batman that allows him to be taken alongside Batman as a free agent. What that means is, is that Gordon doesn't have the Inspire rules that lets him be the boss. Gordon doesn't actually, he's not actually in command of the battle. With Shadow's Agent, this means that if you have Batman, if you bring this Batman, Gordon will be able to be your boss, right? Because this basically means that before the start of the game, you must choose another friendly model to be your boss. And even if it's not Gordon, if you've just got another model that you think would work better as a boss, then you can choose, you ha well, you have to choose another model, right? This is excellent for a number of reasons. Typically with Batman, you want to go like super deep into the opponent's territory. You want to go and you want to be beating people up. You don't want to be hanging around all of your henchmen, giving them Inspire. But Inspire is super important for suspect marker play. And the Batman deck of cards really does rely on putting down suspect markers, finding evidence, tampering with clues if you've got Harvey Bullock, right? And that they get really activated by having been within Inspire range. Inspire, of course, giving you a free manipulate action if you start your activation within that eight inch bubble around your leader. So what this means is you can choose a model who's gonna hang around your cops. You're gonna, you know, if you choose like Gordon and they're gonna give the Inspire range, they can safely hang back in the back line, giving all of your models Inspire and Batman can just push out straight, go ahead, go for the Joker, you know, do what he does best, which is get right in the thick of the opponent and threaten them all. So I'm really impressed by this. I really like this. Sneak attack, pretty standard uh, for Batman as well, but it's an excellent rule. It means that your opponent cannot make efforts if they could not see you at the beginning of your activation. This means you can jump off rooftops and punch people in the back of the head. It, it's very good. Um, <laughs> and they're not able to make the efforts to defend against it. Sorry, I just had the image of Lenny get punched in the back of the head there. <laughs> so this is really good because oftentimes really strong melee units 
can get bogged down a little bit in stun damage because your opponent will effort to defend so you've got to effort to attack and you just get worn down. This allows you to decide a little, give you a bit more of a sort of competency in terms of M efforting it allows you to pick and choose when you want to effort now this won't always go off but with combining this with master of stealth um you know it means that you will more often get sneak attack because remember models won't be able to see you if they're outside of six inches and you're not in a light so that's great sturdy that's pretty good um it means that he can suffer damage obviously every single time you suffer three blood damage you lose one maximum effort limit so typically you can effort up to three times to add three dice to your melee attacks or defense if you have suffered three blood damage that goes to two and if you've suffered six blood damage that goes to one sturdy means that you do not reduce your effort limit due to accumulated damage so that's really useful um, especially because he has so much endurance it, it just means that he'll be able to sort of pump out those efforts when he really needs to vigilante's work is really interesting so during his activation he may make an effort to perform an extra manipulate action. This is really, really good. So oftentimes, you might be, in, I find that when I'm playing Batman, I sometimes fall into the position of, I have Batman, he's a really, really strong model. I need him to do a lot of work with his activation because he's a lot of reputation and I'm, I've bundled a lot of my points into him. So how do I make him, you know, efficient and effective for those amount of reputation? I tend to want to try and use him as a bit of a sort of hammer against the opponent and try to protect my cops and allow my cops to score. However, what this means is that I might be able to score using Batman on top of forming a sort of shield for my cops. I tend to play a very GCPD heavy list when I do play Batman, um, although I think this will be really useful in the Bat Family list as well, which is, you know, Batman with Robin and Nightwing. It's more sort of classic Bat Family sort of orientation. Um, I think that this will be really useful there just because it bundles in a little bit of extra action economy, and that's really, really important in this game. You only get, you know, one action at round, or let's be honest, because this is Batman, you're probably giving him an audacity marker, so he's only getting three actions around, right? And one of those actions has to be a choice of either playing a suspect marker and presumably scoring a card, or punching out an opponent and presumably preventing them from scoring future cards. So, Vigilante's work allows you to do, it basically, it really does, it doubles down on the effectiveness of this model in a lot of ways, and allows him to be a little bit more flexible as compared to other Batman models. This is really good Batman. I think that he's definitely a little bit less offensively strong in terms of just raw stats when compared to other Batman, but he's very tanky at 5 defense and 9 endurance. He also has a very nice toolkit in terms of his blowgun, being able to paralyze enemy models, being able to mess around with the enemies at play. This guy seems like a, uh, this version of Batman basically seems like a very, very powerful um, disruptor of your opponent's stratagems. I think he'll be kind of hard to play and he got a lot of advantage from in terms of knowing when to use the blowgun, knowing when to use the bat beacon. But you, I don't think you can really go wrong by bringing him in a list with a lot of GCPD. I think he'll perform a really nice bulwark against some of the more aggressive enemy models. The lack of a bat armor. Most Batman have bat armor and that is really useful for increasing the survivability of Batman. He doesn't have it, so he might be a little bit prone to being shot to death. However, the 9 endurance does help. 9 endurance is a lot of endurance. It's probably at the top end of potential endurance that a model can have, but assault rifles in this game are very strong, and if they catch Batman year one off guard, if they get if they hit him three times, he is out of there, right? A lot of assault rifles that deal three blood damage with every single hit. So he could he is surprisingly, I think, uh, prone to just sudden death if you get unlucky and your opponent gets lucky. The 5 defense is going to really help him there to try and mitigate a little bit of that damage. But at the end of the day, if you haven't taken the time to position yourself outside of line of sight, inside cover, your opponent might get to roll that strength die, which is super dangerous. My overall thoughts on this, awesome model. Um, I think he's going to slot in really well with a, a lot of Batman. Um, a Batman lists and I think he might slot in well with the Bat family as well so this is a great Batman I think he has the potential to be one of the strongest Batman in the game really excited to see him in action all right and here is the Gordon and Flash models so first of all we're gonna have a look at Gordon year one version of it so 
uh, he's coming on a 30 millimeter base, which is um, sort of the size that I had anticipated that Batman would come on. So he's just the sort of normal standard character size that you would expect. He has the rank of henchman, which I sort of I'm, I'm surprised at, but I don't know why. I think if I had it reflected a little bit more, I probably should have realized that this version of Gordon would be a henchman. It does suit him. He is, of course, Batman affiliated. Um, no surprises there. He has no rivals. He's 46 reputation, so significantly cheaper than the 70 reputation Gordon version. Um, the older Gordon is 70 reputation. He's $200 though, um, so he is a little bit more expensive in terms of funding. He comes with six willpower and six endurance. Those are sort of, they are fine. They're, they're pretty good. Um, they're a little bit more prestige, more premium than the sort of in the 30 reputation space. You see, you know, six willpower, five endurance, or five willpower, six endurance. So this is that little bit extra bump to represent that he is a little bit more expensive. He comes with three attack, which is nothing to write home about, uh, especially as you start to eke into the, uh, the higher reputation costs. Although oftentimes this can sort of be mitigated with if they model has a certain role on the battlefield, which I'm presuming this version of Gordon does. He has four defense though, which is nice. I think that the 70 reputation Gordon has three defense actually. Yeah, so we can see here, this is the other version of Gordon, the older version, he only has three defense. So this Gordon is able to take a little bit extra damage, which is pretty cool. He has five attack, uh, five plus on his strength die, sorry, um, which is just fine. Um, you don't really expect him to be punching a lot of people. He's got 8 movement, which I think is a little bit of a reduction compared to the other Gordon. Uh, no, my mistake. I just double checked that. The other version of Gordon actually has a movement of 8 as well, so this is pretty standard for him. Obviously, though, he's going to get a little bit extra movement just overall, just because he's got the smaller base, you know. He has 3 special, which is sort of standard. He comes with the classic gun profile, and you'll see this profile replicated a lot, especially on a lot of the cops from the sort of GCPD. This is um, this is sort of <laughs> a lot of crews have access to a model with this type of firearm. It's just a blood stun, which is essentially think of this as your sort of standard what damage kind of weapon. It has a rate of fire too, which is sort of fine. It has two ammo, which is fine. Short range, uh, yep, sure. It has the firearm trait and it's light, so you can use it melee. This is just nice and standard. It's not impressive, um, but I'm presuming that he has other stuff. Yep, so he's got martial prowess, which is different. It's one stun damage, but it has overwhelming and crit paralyze. So again, another means by which you can reduce your opponent's ability to play the game a little bit and to sort of uh, stick them out. Obviously, this is on a crit though, so it's going to be far less reliable compared to the stun gun. Not to mention that you're going to have to get him into melee. And overwhelming, I believe that means that for every single attack die he gets through, you're going to need to roll two blocks to actually prevent it from hitting. No, actually I was incorrect. Overwhelming is uh, you suffer minus one to your defense rolls. So overwhelming is minus one to your defense rolls. That actually is great. Um, it means that you're way more likely to get through some stun damage. So that's great. It just means that in lieu of being able to punch somebody for just a simple roll stun damage, you get a little bit extra bonus for that. Crit Paralyze is less relevant to come up, but when it hits, it hits, right? And it might be really big. You can win games on less. He of course comes with the arrest keyword. He is a cop, so that's Arrest is just amazing to have. You want as many models in a Batman list to have the arrest keyword as humanly possible. If only because it means that you can actually remove models from the game board. You can remove opponent models. Also, some of the Batman cards reward you for arresting models, like get them off the streets. So that's super useful. He has bulletproof vest as well. He's not modeled with that, but he has a bulletproof vest, which means that firearms deduct one attack die when rolling against this model. Basically means that they're not going to get to roll their strength die because, of course, you remove the strength die from uh, ranged attacks uh, straight off as the first die that you lose. So this will just mean that you deduct one attack die, which will be the strength die for firearms, meaning that they don't get to roll their amazing two plus strength die. This is great. This is awesome. Um, Fat Bullet Profess is really good. I've been playing a lot of games recently against the Soldiers of Fortune, which come with a lot of Bullet Profess, and you really feel this whenever you've got a lot of shooters. Um, this really does matter. So 
This gives him a little bit of extra survivability. That four defense. I mean, he's already got four defense, right? So this is just awesome against firearms. Okay, and he has coordination, which is a new special as far as I'm aware, which is target a friendly model within eight inches of this model, the share a keyword with this model, then immediately perform an action with that model. So they have to share a keyword. So cops. So he'll be able to do this with cops. He'll be able to do this with detectives. Oh no, sorry. So it's keywords, of course. So it's only the cop keyword. So other cops he'll be able to work with. He can coordinate with them that will allow them to... I mean, I see this essentially as a sort of weaker version of Gordon's ability. Uh, the Savvy Reputation version of Gordon allows all cops around him to arrest as a, as a free action. So this is kind of like a less powerful version of that in the sense that you won't be able to get arrests off as much as it with it but it's stronger in the sense that actually you'll be able to throw you know your cops getting extra attacks in where maybe they wouldn't have been able to otherwise or throwing down a suspect marker where they wouldn't be able to otherwise so this is very flexible i really like this this version of gordon is going to work really well on a cop list i think he has incorruptible which means that he can only be included in a crew with a boss that has the same affiliation okay so he cannot be taken in a lex luther list right okay fair enough i suppose it makes sense right lieutenant gordon is indeed incorruptible and he has observation which means that while he's not activated he gains plus one to his defense rolls and while making an attack against an activated model he gets plus one to head strength rolls wow that's that's really good i'm, I'm actually really impressed by that so he already has four defense, so he's rolling four dice whenever he's defending, and he's going to get plus one to those dice. So that's really super good. This guy's going to be really hard to kill, even with uh, six willpower and six endurance. Obviously, you know, once you've thrown out your coordination, which is probably one of the things you're going to be thinking about most whenever you're thinking about activating this model, right? How can I get my coordinate to you? me out that little bit extra advantage when you're thinking about that you also have to just bear in mind that his defensive nature will be reduced a little bit but he gets the added benefit that if he's attacking someone who's already tried to move to get in close with him he gets plus one to his hit and strength die which is really good his attack uh, dice pull of three isn't that great but your opponent's mi minusing one from their attack not to mention getting the you get plus one to your hit and to strength that, that's great so really think of this as a four plus situationally and then of course with the gun that actually makes the gun a little bit better um if you're able to roll all three dice you know you're, there's no negatives they're not uncover anything this this is a little bit stronger it just means that essentially for your normal to shoot rolls you're you know you're just getting you're opening the window a little bit more it doesn't really matter for the firearm die because a one a roll of one always fails so this plus one doesn't help so sadly it doesn't help with firearm but it's really good for his martial prowess because otherwise he has a pretty weak attack profile in terms of his raw stats so kind of a tricksy model as well a lot of thoughts gonna have to go into when you activate him when you choose to activate him when you're gonna get that coordinate off but i think he has the potential to have a lot of really strong uh gameplay opportunities Next up, we have Detective Flash. I've been really looking forward to seeing what they do with him because I think he might be a little bit of insight in, into how they perceive organized crime going forward. So he is on a 30 millimeter base. He is a henchman as well. He has the Batman affiliation and the organized crime affiliation. So what this means is you can bring him in either a GCPD sort of Batman list or you can bring him in a Falcone, Maroni, Black Mask, kind of organized crime list, and I love that, right? He is a corrupt cop. He has 14 rep... For, sorry, he costs 41 reputation. If he was 14, that would be amazing. He's 41 reputation, and he's $200, so... Uh, a little bit cheaper than Gordon. He has six willpower, six endurance, so the same sort of uh, health bars, basically, as Gordon, but he comes with three attack and three defense, so he's definitely a lot less defensive in terms of his raw stats. He has four plus in his strength, so that's a little bit of a plus. He hit will hit that little bit more often um, on the face of it. And he has eight movement, which is just pretty standard. It's a little bit slower than a lot of the other GCPD models. There's a surprising amount of movement 10 in a Batman GCPD list. So this is a little bit slower. I think this might actually hurt him a little bit. Uh, he won't be able to keep up as well with other models. He has a skill of three. Fine. So again, he comes with the um, the firearm, the sort of standard firearm, and he has a bat. Uh, this is the same bat it looks like that uh, Thug 6 comes with. This is handy and heavy, 
So the damage profile is obviously pretty poor. It's only dealing a single stun damage, right? But handy allows you to reroll failures and heavy gives you plus one to your strength rolls. So really his strength dies hitting on a three plus with this band and he's getting the reroll. So that dice pull of three doesn't look that great, but if you effort three times and you're rolling six dice that you get the reroll failures on, that can be a lot of consistent stun damage. I find that this bat is surprisingly dangerous for a lot of models and it gets underestimated a lot. So he comes with a rest, which is great. Um, I kind of love the idea of taking him in an organized crime list and letting him arrest enemy models. Um, it, it lets actually you play into a little bit more of a stun heavy sort of play style in an organized crime list. Bull Vest, I've already went over that with Gordon. This is really strong. This is surprisingly strong. And when it matters, it really matters. You'll come up against some lists, like a Batman list, where it really doesn't matter that much. You're not going to get shot at a lot. And then you'll come up against the other lists, like a Two Face gang, where it just cripples them in a lot of ways. So this and Bulletproof Vest, having more accessible, more accessibility to it is, is really good. Especially for these sort of more dinky kind of, I mean, Flas isn't dinky, right? But he, he has three defense. He's not exactly winning any prizes for, you know, prime beef competitions here in terms of being able to survive, okay? He's gonna die really quickly to guns. So having a bull profess really adds that little extra spice of, of, of survivability. He has the corrupt truly rule this is new so this allows you to recruit up to three henchmen with the cop trait additional models in the group this trait have no further effect okay wow this is awesome okay i'm actually really excited about this so this means that you can bring cops into an organized crime list if <laughs> if you bring flas using this rule so this means that if you bring flas into your organized crime list you get access to you get access to larita you get access to Harvey Bullock, Montoya. Um, Montoya, actually, I think will find it easier to slot into an organized crime list alongside Flas, just because she can't be taken in the same list as the Batman model, as the Batman character. So that's funny. Um, she'll work easier with uh, with organized criminals rather than Batman, sure. But you'll also get access to, you know, Officer Merkel. Wow, there's a lot of really good cops that I think this will work really well with. This is really awesome. So I love sort of corrupt GCPD lists. It's why I'm a really big fan of Luther. However, the problem is, is that, well, what I can foresee here is that one, it looks like Lex Luther might be getting a little bit relegated to the side. I'm not sure if there's gonna be a lot of support for Lex Luther absolute par in the future, which is kind of sad because I really like his uh, play style, his ability to bring cops with his organized crime crew. Uh, for those who don't know, Lex Luther has absolute par, which allows him to take cops into his list. So obviously Gordon, with his incorruptible won't be able to be taken in the same list as an organized crime into an organized crime crew basically it seems like that is literally a sort of counterpoint to this corrupt model it just means that lieutenant garden won't work for organized crime but more than that there is this sort of statement that additional models in the crew of this trade have no further effect. So this on the one hand could just be future proofing or there might already be models out there honestly that have it somewhere in the distant past that I'm not aware of. I doubt that though. But what this could mean is that we might be seeing more corrupt cops. I would really love to see a, a low web model that really relies on merging organized crime and GCPD. I think there's space for a lot of really cool play like that. I think Loeb would make for a really cool leader of Batman or affiliation or even a sidekick rank. Oh, so I'm, I'm really excited to see what the future holds there. I love this sort of blending of the lines, especially for year one. I think it makes a lot of sense. I'd really hope to see that we might get a uh, new SWAT team of some kind as well that could be taken with a sort of uh, corrupted GCPD list. I think that would be really cool to go up against the Bat family. I think that's actually like one mirror match or sort of a semi mirror match I'd really like to see. Finally, he has Detective, which is fine, um, and he has Evidence Tampering, so he comes with this sort of Harvey Bullock package of being able to place friendly suspect markers down and remove enemy suspect markers in the same activation, in the same action. This is really useful for a lot of Batman cards. Harvey Bullock is one of the best models, I, th I think, in a GCPD Batman list because of this rule. Evidence tampering allows him to get a lot of economy out of his actions. So Flash having this is really strong and actually makes him really, really good. This model is amazing. I 
think he's probably going to be like a real mainstay in a lot of GCPD lists and I think you're going to see him very often in organized crime just to get a little bit of those really good cop models from the back of Gotham set into an organized crime crew to get a little bit more of that three defense sort of like beef here kind of models and to spread out a little bit more stun damage. Yeah, I'm really excited by this model. Um, I think he's going to be really, really cool. Really excited to see him in play, and no doubt I'm going to end up playing against him a lot because I play against ECPD a lot. The only thing I would say is that I kind of wish that he had a uh, like a, a, his sort of uniform on in some capacity, or he looked a little bit more official, just because I think most play states, you know, he's going to be sort of dressed as a cop. He's going to be acting in a police capacity. But that said, this is a very iconic pose for him, so I, I will accept it. Okay, and finally we have Crazy Quilt. So probably one of the models that obviously everyone was looking for. Everyone's been awaiting with bated breath for this model. I can't prolong the excitement any longer. Let's dive straight into this guy. Okay, but for real, um, I had never heard of this character before night models had teased him. I mean, I'd heard of Calendar Man, I'd heard of Condiment King, I love Condiment King. I'd heard of Clock King, I loved Clock King in the animated series. But I don't, and I hadn't really heard of Gentleman Ghost. But I mean, I've heard of a lot of these sort of meme silly henchmen, but Crazy Quilt, for me, was really out there. So I don't really have much of an idea about his character or the things he sort of does in the uh, comics, but let's take a look at him and see how he has been translated into the game. Okay, so Crazy Quilt. His alias is Paul Decker, who knew he's on a 40mm base, so he's a little bit of the larger size base. Not quite as big as a 60mm, but sort of small boss leader size. He is a henchman, yep, so he is once again slotting into those sort of silly henchman model styles. He's affiliation unknown, which is great, yep, so he can be brought in. He seems like he's probably going to be another technical piece, like the other Mimi henchmen. He'll do something specific that you might want to slot in to your toolkit as a crew. And he has rivals Batman, so once again, Batman being left out of the cold in terms of getting access to these silly henchmen. He's 44 reputation at $300. This is actually very standard for these movie henchmen. They tend to be around the 40 reputation uh, mark. He's 6 willpower, 6 endurance, so pretty standard. He has 2 attack and 3 defense. So 3 months ago I would have told you that 2 attack is a garbage tier attack for this reputation. It's not worth it, don't take it. It's a huge detriment to the model. But this is just the raw stat, so no doubt he's probably going to be, Crazy Quilt's going to be doing something very silly, very different. Because that's the sort of format that a lot of the other models have taken, like Pol Polka Dot Man last month. He was only 2 attack as well, but he has a utility, so we'll reserve judgement until we see his traits. 3 defence is not good though, and 2 attack is not good in terms of raw stats for 44 reputation. More so 2 attack is just terrible, it means that you will never want to get into melee with this guy with base stats. 3 defense though is sort of fine, though not great. So 6 plus strength die is again awful and it's just reinforcing that you don't want to get this guy into melee. It makes sense, I think he's just a painter of some kind. He has 8 defense, so he's, or 8 movement rather, so he's going to be pretty slow. And he has 3 special, so nothing right home about. He does however have lethal blast, which is a short range beam assault weapon. Deals 2 blood damage, has rate of fire 2 and 2 ammo. This is a nice gun. So the beam... I think means that he hits on a 2 plus. Yeah, so beam means that he hits on a 2 plus, and not only that, but he ignores the target's uh, cover, so they don't get cover against it, which is really good, so you'll more often get this with dice. Or the strength die for this weapon. Not only that, he comes with assault as well, so he's going to be, although, uh, although he doesn't seem to have a lot of movement, he will still be able to be mobile in that he can move and attack, so he might be a little bit hungry for audacity markers. Two blood is really good in terms of a damage profile. It's much better than blood stun like we'd seen on the previous guns on the sort of more year, on, the, on the year one models. Double blood is great because it allows you to sort of double down on something that you're good at and it can put out models early. So this is a pretty good gun. Um, it's not particularly impressive when compared to something like maybe a Tommy gun, but it's still pretty good. And assault is a really nice keyword. It's one of the best keywords for being mobile, being able to jump through sewer markers and shoot people. It's just, it opens up a lot of avenues that a lot of guns don't have access to. Blinding Blast is a zero damage profile, rate of fire one, one ammo. It has expansive, so that means that you're going to be rolling either a strength die or just a normal attack die if you've moved. It has beam as well, so you won't be getting any cover. That's okay. I think it's more so the fact that 
it has a plus two or two plus the strength roll, sure. Innovating two, so it's going to give uh, an effect. Well, I mean, but the next effort that that model that's hit by this does, they will have less two less that they can effort. It has crit blind. Blind is a really strong keyword. So blind means that if you get blinded, you cannot draw a line of sight to anyone until the end of the round. You cannot shoot at anybody, and if you do attack someone, then you only hit on natural results of sixes on your dice. So that can really cripple a model for a round if it's hit by the blind. Because this is expansive, it means that it's going to be a large sort of a shotgun kind of style template, which means that you could get quite a few people in. Ten I tend to think that the sort of technical AOE markers aren't very good, but blind is a really good effect. So if that goes off, this is really strong. But because it's only on a crit, it means you're going to need to roll a six to get it and that's really tough and it's not something that you're going to want to rely on not to mention that if you have moved before attacking you're not rolling a strength die you're just rolling a normal to hit die which importantly means you cannot crit with that so my first impression is that's not too great it has the potential to be really strong but more often than not we'll probably just whiff so let's see what his traits are like so he has the criminal keyword, okay? I think there's a few cards now that, where this keyword actually matters. I think there's only the one, but it's in organized crime. So that's just something to think about. Okay, he has a very specific rule, which is Quilt's helmet. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so he can see any model within eight inches of himself. He ignores any rule and scenery and ignores the blind effect, which are all good. He may spend his special action to target an enemy model within six inches. And that model suffers the hypnotize effect so what hypnotize allows you to do is to make two actions with an enemy model if it goes off it's an opposed willpower roll so there is an element of that uh, it can't be resisted by the opponent but if it does go off then you get to make two actions it's important to note that those actions can't be things like jump off a building it can't be something that will actively harm the model in that direct sense but you can do things like throw down a suspect marker if you think it's gonna you know annoy your opponent or prevent them from scoring a different card you know um and you can't attack enemy models using that enemy model that you have hypnotized so that's pretty good that's a pretty good par uh this model may only purchase up to one equipment that's not awful you tend to not really want to overload these guys with a lot of funding cost anyway but just because they do tend to get taken out pretty early on if they are caught off guard they're not the most survivable of minions but hypnotize really does seem to be the main reason why you're going to bring this guy. It's just a little bit of added spice that you could bring to an otherwise pretty mundane list. He has a lantern as well, which means that he can count as a light source with the radius of two inches until the end of the round. Okay, that's pretty good as well. Lantern is a sort of overlooked rule, but it's nice to be able to have a mobile uh, light source. Of course, the problem is that it's symmetrical, so if you're going up against an opponent that has a lot of guns as well, then that's pretty dangerous. But yeah, okay, so a lot less keywords on this guy, but I think he actually works well because of it. It means that the keywords that he does have are a little bit more impactful. I'm thinking specifically of Quilt Helmet. It's hard to say whether or not that's worth 44 reputation. Making two actions can be really good. The problem that I have with Hypnotize is something that is an issue, generally speaking, in the game, in that models that you wish to affect these sort of more technical willpower attacks, things that, you know, will allow you to take actions with them, or there's other ones which prevent other models from taking uh, special actions, for example, because they're willpower roles, the models that you can consistently get these actions on, such as Quilt's Helmet, will tend to be weaker henchmen which means they can do a lot less with those actions. As opposed to say, take a control of Batman. If this was a take a control, you know, or rather not just, if this was straight up, you get to make an enemy model take two actions of your choice, this would be amazing. But because there's that willpower roll element, it means that you cannot guarantee that you're gonna get it off. And really, if you're not getting it off, what else is this guy doing? But that said, he is saved a little bit by having that lethal blast. I think that's a really nice gun. I think it's surprisingly good. I don't know if it's worth throwing on top of a 44 reputation model. You can definitely get weapons in a lot of lists for cheaper that are probably a little bit better, but it is good to have. I'm glad he has that so that he can actually do something even if Quilt's helmet isn't worthwhile taking, though he might be prone to just getting burst down. Yeah, so. 
looks like a pretty interesting piece. I'm sure he'll slot into a few lists and I'll definitely be checking him out. So yeah, that's my video today on the year one list as well as crazy quilts. Um, a lot of new releases, a lot of interesting models, a little bit of surprise in some regards. Obviously this has come out alongside the new uh, card box. The new card box will come with the crew decks that are for everyone except for Batman and Joker. So they'll come with the Being Soldiers of Fortune deck, they'll come with the Riddler deck, they'll come with the Organized Crime deck, Cults deck, Penguin, League of Assassins, Birds of Prey, Court of Isles, and a set of generic cards as well as the character objective cards. Oh, and of course, Toothpaste as well. How did I forget him? Those decks are great. I really suggest you pick them up, even if you have a few of the cards already. If only because it's really nice to have all of the crews, I think, in physical format. That, and it's pretty cheap, I think. It's pretty cheap. £22. Um, so I think, what, 25 euros or so. I think that's a really good price for what this is. Yeah, so that's pretty awesome. So thanks a lot for joining me, guys. I will, on my next video, cover the starter box, the Back to Gotham Cruise, as well as the Gordon, uh, the sort of 70 reputation older Gordon model, and the Joker model as well, the Back to Gotham Joker uh, styled model. So I do hope you join me for that. And then I'm probably going to have a look through the objective cards for the new crews at some stage. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I was basically waiting to see whether or not we'd see any new Batman cards before I began to do my deep dives again into the crew decks. So I've already done one in Joker. You can see that ping up above. But I think I'm going to begin to think about doing my Batman one now that we have seen the Batman deck. So thanks everyone for joining me today. Um, it's been a real pleasure. So I hope you join me on the next video. And remember, if you did enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Bye-bye.